where are Caribbean countries? There are about 10 countries, I believe, in the, uh, well, among CDB's boring member countries where debt is contributing negatively um, to growth. And out of those, there are about four countries where um, you can say that there's an acute probability of debt distress. Those high primary deficits have resulted from a, a number of factors, including the incidence of natural disasters. Natural disasters result in expenditures, uh, very often to rebuild what was already there. Um, so you, you spend twice on perhaps the same infrastructure. It's also related to weak uh, public finance management systems that lead to capital expenditures that have low returns. So there's, a, there's not a strong link between what the government wants to achieve and the expenditures that they're undertaking. Public-private partnerships, that's been a, a factor as well, as well as some country-specific causes such as subsidizing um, loss-making industry, industries. St. Kitts is an example of this. The financial sector crisis was very costly in Jamaica, and it is very costly in Antigua and Barbuda. Among other things, high energy costs, um, you have export concentration, which leads to significant, uh, significant risk. Why exact, exactly is debt overhang a development issue? Well, if debt is too high, it can lead to liquidity issues. High debt can be extremely burdensome and can um, result in payment problems for a country which again has a whole series of issues associated with it. It can also reflect solvency problems where a situation, uh, a burden, a debt burden is so large that uh, to reduce it by normal means is either difficult or impossible. High indebtedness can constrain development in the sense that a potential investor uh, looking on a situation where indebtedness is high uh, might be discouraged from investing in a particular country because he or she anticipates that eventually they're going to be have to they're going to have to be uh, corrective measures which could change his or her return profile or the return profile on on his or her pro uh, project. So high debt creates uncertainty, and it can, as a result of that, it can hinder uh, investment. The other thing is that it can crowd out development expenditures. So if a country or a government is burdened by uh, high indebtedness and has to make significant payments, which usually are prioritized because governments try to uh, protect their credibility on the market, then what happens is that it limits the ability of said government to engage in expenditures that would uh, be developmental. Now, sustainability is normally defined as being anything less than uh, a debt to GDP ratio of 60%. And there are good reasons why this threshold is regarded as being sustainable. Um, there's lots of empirical evidence to suggest that beyond this, debt starts to impact negatively um, on, on GDP. Uh, and I'm very quickly going to cite uh, some literature. Uh, Rogoff and Reinhardt, in particular in 2010, found that uh, above a ratio of 60%, debt starts to affect GDP negatively. They also found that above 90% of GDP, the probability of debt distress, that is where a, a country uh, uh, is forced to stall payments on its debt, the prob probability of default becomes acute above 90%. That is the experience that, that the data uh, suggests. Uh, these thresholds also affect investor perception and lender perception. So when your debt to GDP ratio starts to increase, then a potential lender worries about your risk, puts a few percentage points or basis points onto the interest rate that, that, that the country will be charged, and that in itself tends to contribute negatively to the way that debt evolves. So that... I want you to get a sense of a, a rich and varied but hot controversy in the economic literature over what constitutes optimal debt to GDP ratios when properly calculated. So we know we have a debate around uh, the calculus and the methodology used by 
Reinhard Rogoff, the average real GDP growth for countries carrying a public debt to GDP ratio of over 90% is actually 2.2%. Yes. So in other words, contrary to Reinhard Rogoff, average GDP growth at a pub, at public debt to GDP ratios over 90% is not dramatically different than when debt to GDP ratios are lower. The aim makes a very important point, however, by talking about investor perception. And if indeed there is an idea being propagated that 40% is ideal, a debt to GDP ratio of 40%, and certainly nothing, nothing approaching 90% of GDP and over, if that is the perception that is going to govern how rating agencies think or the risk analysts among those uh, investor firms, if that's going to govern their common sense, it poses a challenge for countries like ours. Now, if you've wrongly figured out the problem and you approach countries in the Caribbean that are well over 90%, a GDP, debt to GDP ratio of over 90%, and you're drawing from a toolbox a set of fiscal austerity measures to correct for a problem that is still hotly debated in the field, I hope you understand mm -hmm. then that we're talking about the power of discourse mm -hmm. shaping a particular common sense. When in actual fact, if you take a step back and wander into the debate around ideas around these things, you find that among dueling economists, there is no common consensus. Because I think the question of debt sustainability is a big, long tension. Even, and it's not just heterodox economists, even within the fund. The IMF staff has written at least three papers identifying different pathways about looking at debt sustainability. And every time it gets up to the executive, they have not they have not followed through on those papers. So even within the IMF, they know the situation is untenable. The problem is, is not just the conceptual thinking, it's the political thinking. So the debt, is, in a way, is a weapon of control. Also, to get at some of the points of uh, allowing for financial uh, centralization and so forth in, in, inside many economies. So I think we, we need to look at that. You know, the, the debt-to-GDP debt ratio is such a, to my mind, such a powerful indicator. It has so much information uh, if it's going in the wrong direction it can tell you it, 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 it can it can tell you yes that something's wrong it might not tell you exactly what where we want to start though is a pretty much a down-to-earth relationship the fact the fact of the matter is that expenditure creates debt right but expenditure should also lead to growth if a country, let's not talk about these thresholds, let's forget these thresholds. Let's look at the direction in which this ratio is going. If you are undertaking expenditure which increases your debt, but it is not creating the, in, the increase in your economy, the reduction of poverty, etc., that it should, then you are misusing those resources. That, to me, is the fundamental issue. I believe that it's important to have a counter-narrative around um, the questions about uh, debt sustainability and, and an entire discourse around what Caribbean countries should do following uh, certain understandings in the field. Uh, we know that there are social, financial, emo emotional costs of recovery that always remain hidden once we are prepared to just narrowly focus on national level of debts deficits, taxes and expenditure, and we don't do ourselves justice by going in, by looking and examining what is happening at the micro level of the household and in the daily life of people. So if we want to be practical, we have to do prior investigations on the human costs and broader social challenges associated with recovery in order to inform our bargains and negotiations with the fund. So it's a matter of what information is feeding the negotiators as they go and sit at the table. There are a number of ways that, um, that our countries can achieve debt sustainability. Uh, 
there needs to be a comprehensive approach and by comprehensive I'm talking about an approach that really incorporates all aspects of what, are, what is commonly referred to as debt dynamics. The imperatives that suggest themselves are uh, structural reforms that enhance competitiveness and, and, growth, and, and boost growth, uh, public finance management reforms that enhance fiscal outcomes to make sure that there's a, a better and more efficient use of, um, of uh, public resources. Uh, refinancing as well is an option to reduce the average effective interest rate and the whole notion of restructuring as well as debt swaps uh, to reduce debt and this is some of the um, th these are some of the sort of novel uh, more recent uh, ways that um, you know that the debt issue can be can be wrestled there also needs to be regulatory reforms to reduce energy costs uh, good debt management so that resources are accessed as cheaply as possible and you manage a lot of other risk the the notion of uh, debt buybacks as well this is the HIPIC, which mostly G7 countries got together and purchased the debt, from, the debt of low-income countries from multilaterals. There's also possibly a need to look at issues such as debt reduction. Uh, debt reduction including possibly debt restructuring, including debt for asset swaps, um, debt for nature swaps as well. And, um, you know, a comprehensive approach that really incorporates all of these elements so that the Caribbean can, um, you know, can move to a position where, where uh, inclusive growth can be pursued uh, unhindered by the burden of debt. And I would like to encourage us as Caribbean partnerships. Um, the Vice President, Pat, talked yesterday about um, this sustainable mechanism that we want to create. This is a clear important research agenda item for, for the people in this room. It has to be clear, the message has to be bold. Um, I think that we are, we are very good at criticism, um, critique, we do that very well. We have, to, we have to shift forward to solutions because, I mean, the fact is that we do have a current context that we need to unpack and that we need to, to destabilize, but we, it takes work to do that. Right? And we can't just sit back and say, well, this is wrong and that is wrong, because really, what are the alternatives for our small island developing state? I think there's a lot here that we can take forward in partnership. Practically speaking, those of us who are interested in this issue, who have some capacity, who have some um, a sphere of influence in our respective agencies and countries, I would encourage us to take it forward with the bank support, with the support of the UWI and the other partners here, um, and see how we can unpack some of these issues further. Thank you.